Space is the final frontier. Traveling through and living in space is pretty difficult, and not just because it involves escaping Earth's atmosphere. Being in zero gravity for extended periods of time does some wacky things to the human body. Unless aliens show up and teach us how to deal with these unique challenges, it's up to scientists to discover ways for the human body to cope. Amazing! Number 10. Muscle Atrophy Gravity, of course, is what allows you to walk around on the Earth with your feet on the ground. In space, your main mode of transportation is floating instead. Floating, it turns out, is not great exercise, since it requires almost no energy. Down here on Earth, even if you don't work out, moving your body against the force of gravity requires more effort on your behalf. Even if you're not picking up weights every day, you're at least picking something up every day. In space, you never have to fight gravity, and so you don't have to use your muscles nearly as much. As a result, they atrophy, meaning they waste away. When you get back to Earth, you'll really have to go hard in the gym to make up for all those lost gains. On the flip side, at least you won't snore, since without gravity affecting your respiratory system, scientists have discovered that there's a huge reduction in sleep-breathing problems. Number 9. Space Euphoria The mind is the most important part of the body, so how is it affected by living up in space? Many astronauts have reported that their time in space was a seriously enlightening and perspective-changing time of their life. Charlie Duke, the 10th and youngest person to walk on the moon, said, I was overwhelmed by the certainty that what I was witnessing was part of the universality of God. I just choked up. Tears came. It was the most deeply moving experience of my life. NASA astronaut Edgar Mitchell reported a similarly euphoric feeling saying that he suddenly understood the meaning of the universe. Gene Sermon, the last person to ever walk on the moon, said it was too beautiful to happen by accident. There has to be somebody bigger than you, and bigger than me, and I mean this in a spiritual sense, not a religious sense. Traveling to space seems to have a profound impact on people's outlook on the universe. Number 8. Space Radiation Luckily for us down here on Earth, our atmosphere protects us from cosmic radiation. However, astronauts outside this atmosphere, out in space, do not have this luxurious blanket, and so they're exposed to 10 times more radiation than they would be if they were on Earth. This can damage the nervous system, which leads to altered cognitive function, reduced motor function, and behavioral changes. Cognitive and motor functions sort of seem like things you would want to have at 100% if you were piloting a spaceship, or really doing anything other than watching daytime television. All this extra radiation can also lead to radiation sickness, the symptoms of which include nausea, vomiting, anorexia, and fatigue. It also increases your risk of getting cancer, and there is currently no real solution to this problem. Number 7. Vision Problems if you spend too much time in space, the backs of your eyeballs will flatten just a tiny little bit. This is as bad as it sounds, and it causes your vision to blur. While fortunately it usually doesn't last, for some astronauts it has taken years for their vision to return to normal. On longer flights, 49% of astronauts have experienced vision issues. This happens because in the weightlessness of space, your bodily fluids all head to your upper body, and the increased pressure in your head crushes your optic nerves just a teensy bit. But the eye problems don't stop there. Astronauts also have to deal with cosmic ray visual phenomena, which is seeing sudden flashes of light supposedly caused by cosmic rays. Number 6. A Strange Smell One question that isn't really explored in many science fiction books or films is what exactly does space smell like? Wouldn't it just smell like whatever Earth smells like? Apparently not. According to astronauts, space smells like seared steak, burning metal, and gunpowder. This is presumably also what Ron Swanson would smell like, but I'm not entirely sure just what this connection means for the future of space travel. When asked about the smell, astronaut Don Petit, who has spent two long-duration stays on the International Space Station, said, The best description I can come up with is metallic. NASA even hired a chemist, Stephen Pierce, to recreate the unique smell for training so that astronauts won't be weirded out by it when they go up there. I imagine that you could come close to replicating this smell by shooting off some cannons at a barbecue, though this may actually be more dangerous than just going into space, unless you really know what you're doing. And interestingly enough, 
because smells don't get aired out in space as well as they do back home. NASA employs a professional smeller to make sure all equipment sent up there has as neutral a smell as possible. George Aldrich is the current chief odor tester for NASA, and he has a really important job, protecting astronauts from any obnoxious odors. It may sound ridiculous, but if he fails to identify just one problematic pong, a whole mission could be in jeopardy. Number 5. Space Adaption Syndrome If you go too long without Earth's gravity holding down your body, you could end up with space sickness, formerly known as Space Adaption Syndrome. Space Adaption Syndrome is like motion sickness on steroids. Headaches, disorientation, intense discomfort, vomiting, and vertigo. About half of all astronauts report experiencing this, and it sounds horrible. At least it only lasts for the first few days, so you kind of just have to buckle down and ride it out when you first get up there. It would be best to avoid vomiting since, as you can imagine, cleaning up vomit in zero gravity really does not sound like a pleasant experience. And if you're wearing a spacesuit, it can actually be very dangerous. Your vomit will fill up the vacuum-sealed helmet, which can lead to breathing problems and make it difficult to see. This is why astronauts wear a transdermal diamond hydronet anti-nausea patch to combat this whenever they put on a spacesuit. Number 4. Confinement Craziness If you have a family, a roommate, or have even simply interacted with another human being, you should know that if you put a bunch of people in a confined area for an extended period of time, problems are bound to arise. On the International Space Station or a space shuttle, you can't leave if there's an argument. You can't even take a walk around the block to clear your head. NASA has been studying the way humans react to extended periods of isolation in order to combat declines in mood, cognition, and morale. I mean, you are sitting in a tin can at the end of the day. NASA even performed an experiment this year in Hawaii where they isolated six subjects from the outside world for eight whole months and recorded their experience. How they ever found people to sign up for that is obviously the real question here. Number 3. Your immune system gets worse Space also takes a toll on your immune system, which you need to protect your body against diseases more than ever in space. Because if you get sick on Earth, you'll probably be able to take the day off. But if you're on the space station or piloting a ship, you likely won't have that option. The increased amount of radiation, the lack of gravity, the added stress of living in space rather than safely here on the ground, the isolation, and the disruption to your circadian rhythm all contribute to this problem. Astronauts will encounter microbes from themselves, their fellow crew members, the food they eat, and the ship or station itself. And due to the confined area in which they live, if one of them gets sick, there's a higher chance of another crew member getting sick. And before you know it, there's only one of you left conscious to fight off the evil supercomputer or the xenomorph or whatever else space decides to throw at you. Number 2. You'll lose bone mass Here on Earth, you maintain your bones thanks to the natural power of gravity and mechanical loading. Osteoblasts, which are cells that regulate the bone matrix, and osteoclasts, which absorb one's matrix, continually remodel your bone mass. This is great because you really need bones in order to not be a big pile of jello. Unfortunately for astronauts, in spaceflight, the balances of these two processes gets thrown off, which causes reduced bone mineral density. Scientists have discovered that a 3.5% loss of bone density occurs after just 16 to 28 weeks of spaceflight. On the plus side, traveling to space will make you taller. In zero gravity, your vertebrae spread apart, lengthening your spine. It can only make you about 3% taller, but hey, it's something. Oh, you will return to your original height after a few months, though, so don't sign any NBA contracts. Before I reveal the most outrageous example in this list, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to Be Amazed. We upload amazing fact-filled videos every day, so don't miss out on learning some amazing new information. Also, hit that bell icon for notifications on more amazing fact-filled videos. Number 1. Your Heart Weakens The heart, perhaps the most important muscle you have, is also affected by a lack of gravity. The very size and shape of the human heart is changed by a trip to space. The right and left ventricles decrease in mass due to a decrease in fluid. Your heart rate will be lower in space. Scientists observed that the heart rate of a standing person on the International Space Station was similar to their heart rate while they were lying down on Earth. Your blood pressure and cardiac output will decrease as well. These things lead to a reduction in blood flow, which reduces your aerobic capacity. This is bad since astronauts have a lot of important things to do on the space station, so they really don't have a lot of room for a reduced capacity for anything. 
It would also make running away from aliens more difficult, which I think is a danger that NASA has seriously overlooked. Have all of these facts impacted your plans to be on that first ship to Mars? Maybe staying here on Earth doesn't sound so bad after all, even if we have our disputes here and there. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.